All right. So now let's do uh, a little example on safety factors for both shear and um, normal forces. All right. Now let's look at a, a little slightly more complex problem that's going to give us a little practice on shear and normal stress. So here we have a suspender rod um, that has a, uh, uh, an axle that is poking through a hole here. And um, it's, it's holding up a net full of baby lambs, right? Let's just, uh, let's make failure really disastrous here. Um, and then the lambs are applying a, a 20 kilonewton force here. Um, so we want to make sure that uh, this, this little piece here, our suspender rod, isn't going to fail. So how do we do that? Well, we need to determine the minimum required diameter of the rod, right? There's going to be a normal stress along this rod, but there's also going to be a shear stress within the rod up here. Uh, at the diameter of this larger hole. And so we want to make sure that both of those are uh, going to be strong enough to, to hold up our baby lambs. So we're going to set our factor of safety at 1.8 and we're going to look up, you know, that's all you do. We look up our material properties here. We know our failure, our sh failure shear stress, uh, 63 megapascals, and we know our failure normal stress uh, which is 108 megapascals. So you can see those aren't always the same. Some materials do really well with um, particular kinds of stresses, but not with others. So start with um, just the resultant force. What's the resultant force uh, within this rod um, at the section D? So pause and answer that one. And we'll go on to the next one. So the next question is, once we have that normal force here, right, which uh, isn't, you know, I, I hope this is something that you're getting the hang of, right? If it's at equilibrium and we divide it here, then obviously we're going to need a 20 kilonewton force uh, pulling up. So that's going to be the force there. Now we want to know what the stress is in that space. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're trying to find the allowable average stress um, at D. So you have to think about whether that's normal or shear, uh, and then you have to think about how to use the factor of safety here. So I'll pause. And I'll question. So now we want to find the diameter, right? And so we're going to use our average uh, normal stress equation. And we want to make sure that our stress does not get above 60 megapascals. So we take our area is equal to P over allowable stress. Then we redefine area here as pi over D squared over 4, since we're looking for D. That's just like pi R squared, just a different form of your circle equation. And then we can solve for D here. Okay, so that solution is here. So this is just an algebraic rearrangement of this guy. We're solving for D. Uh, our force here is our 20 kilonewtons, our P. Our allowable uh, normal stress is 60 uh, megapascals. And we find that we need a diameter of just over 20.6 uh, millimeters. And obviously we can use a bigger one, right? So we just want to make sure it's not any smaller than that. Okay. So now we know uh, what diameter of the shaft we need, um, but that's not the only part that could fail here, right? We could fail um, 
at this uh, at the disk here. The disk could break as well, uh, and we want to figure out what shear force. Because if you look at if you think about this circumference, it's essentially a cylinder uh, that's being subjected to a shear force by this hole, um, and we want to figure out. Uh, how thick we need to make that disc to resist that shear force. So first we'll just start with allowable shear force. What's our allowable shear force if the failure stress is 63 megapascals and this uh, factor of safety is still 1.8? So get, go ahead and answer that one. And you should find an answer that is less than 63 megapascals, right? Because we want the, the shear stress in the actual piece to be less than uh, the allowable. And then the next step, see if you can figure out how thick the disc must be. Um, so we're going to start here with this equation with our average shear stress. And you're trying, that's the, those red arrows here on this cylinder right here. So you're trying to figure out what's my average shear stress on this surface that can withstand my 20 kilonewton force. So go ahead and do that. All right, so now that you figured that out, um, with a little pause there. <laughs> we'll go to the next slide. All right, let's 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 go ahead and solve that in case you had some troubles uh, with that question. Uh, we want to find the thickness of this disk T, right? And if we model this cylinder in here, we sort of enlarge it up here, we can see that the area of that the side of that cylinder is going to be the circumference of the circle uh, multiplied by T. Okay, so that area of the cylinder is going to be equal to our shear stress, or our shear force rather, over our shear stress, and that area is also going to be equal to pi D, our circumference, times T. Then we can solve this uh, to find. Um, what that area has to be, or really what the what T has to be. So we take pi over D and uh, move it to the other side of the equation, move it to the denominator here, and we get the force that has to be supported by the shear for st stress uh, divided by these terms down here, uh, 35 megapascals we found as our allowable shear. This is our overall uh, resultant force and then that's pi times the diameter of that circle. And we find that the thickness uh, of that disk has to be uh, almost five millimeters, so half a centimeter. Uh, and it helps that the diameter is large here, right? The larger this diameter, the more we can spread that shear stress out over a larger area. Um, and so since that's fairly sizable, um, the thickness doesn't have to be too large to support, um, support our load. Uh, and so our tiny lambs are saved from the ravenous sharks. Ha <laughs> ha! Engineering uh, triumphs again. Okay. And that's it.